Property taxes are the most consistent source of funding for Kansas counties. Most of the services we enjoy, the roads we drive on, the parks we walk in, and the firefighters we depend on are paid for by land and property owners who pay property taxes. Property taxes are based on the value of the property and the mill levy that is attached to that property. Every year, county leaders determine the budget or the money needed to run the county you live in. That amount is divided by the total assessed value of all the taxable property in the county, and the resulting figure is called the mill levy or the tax rate. Likewise, every year the county appraiser determines the value of your property called the appraisal. Appraisals depend primarily on comparable property values or comps to make sure that similar properties are given similar valuations. However, sometimes this process can go wrong. Dark store theory is an economic argument that big box stores use to lower their tax bill. They argue the building they have has no value other than to be used as a big box store. Some will argue that this makes these buildings less valuable than they would normally be if they were sold. This is important because if you remember, I said that property taxes are based on the value of the property multiplied by the mill levy set by your county. A decrease in value means a decrease in the amount of taxes owed by that building owner. This may sound good, right? Everybody wants lower property taxes, but the bad part is if big box stores are allowed to lower the value for their building and then pay less taxes, tax paying citizens like you and I are left holding the entire tax bill. What that means is that we as homeowners and landowners and other building owners must pay more when big box stores are allowed to pay less. Hi, I'm Bruce Cladney, the Executive Director for the Kansas Association of Counties, and joining me today to discuss this controversial taxation philosophy that is becoming increasingly popular with Kansas businesses is Riley County Councilor Clancy Holman. All right. Well, thanks, Clancy, for joining me today. So I uh, appreciate the, the time and, and the energy that you give to the Kansas Association of Counties and share with our uh, listeners a little bit about yourself and, and what you do there at Riley County. Sure, Bruce. Uh, I'm the Riley County Counselor. Uh, I've had this position since 2005, about 16 and a half years. Before that, I was Assistant County Counselor in Sedgwick County for about 16 years. And uh, this, well, with October, I've been practicing law for just about 38 years, most of it representing uh, county government exclusively. Wow. So tell me a little bit more about dark store theory and how you came to be uh, aware of it and how it's kind of crept into your professional life over these past several years. I'd be glad to. Uh, yeah, crept in is a pretty good way to describe it. <laughs> the, uh, we became aware of it at Riley County when our appraiser started reporting that uh, taxpayers, some business taxpayers were coming into his office and requesting a 45% reduction in the valuation of their commercial real property. And they were doing so based on a theory we've come to know as dark store. Now they don't call it dark store. The people advocating for this, people should know they are never going to call it dark store. Okay. Okay. We'll get to, we'll get to some of that. I think. Yes, please do. Talk. Yes. But, uh, our county appraiser, of course, uh, like all county appraisers, is held to a certain standard of percentage of value on all properties. And mm -hmm. we historically in Riley County, like most counties, we've had a very good record of keeping within those parameters over the years okay. uh, in terms of the valuation of uh, commercial property. So he would look at the evidence and then he would decide, well, it's there's no reason certainly to get a 45% reduction or really any reduction. And so at the informal hearings, he would say no. Uh, that's not going to happen. And then the taxpayers, some of them, uh, would, using the dark store theory, would go to the Board of Tax Appeals, make the same argument, and unfortunately begun uh, to win. Oh, wow. Uh, that's what caught our attention. Uh, and uh, it kind of it kind of has grown from there. Riley County's primary interest here is in making sure, to the extent we can, that the lawful property tax base of Riley County is preserved. Mm -hmm. As every county knows, it is the property tax that provides the primary source of revenue that allows counties to operate on a daily basis. Right. And so we talk a little bit about the value, but then also the mill levy that's attached to that. And when you multiply those two together, you come up with a, a tax bill. So you talk about dark store theory and the terminology. Let's unpack that for just a second. Tell me a little bit more about that. What's, what's the difference there? Because I've come to know it as dark store theory. What's the official title? Well, you can. There's nothing wrong with calling it dark store. I okay. just, I just want to 
sensitize people to the idea that uh, the concept that the people that are advocating for it, they will deny that it's dark story. They will deny that that's what they're doing. It's really a media creation of where this first cropped up, cropped up excuse me, it came up in, uh, in, in other states. Uh, one of them was Wisconsin. And the media latched on to the idea of dark store. But it's kind of a, I will, in a moment, I can explain why that actually is kind of apropos. But uh, no one's going to step forward and say, I want a dark store value. That isn't going to happen. They're going to come in to the county appraiser and they're going to say, they're going to ask for a substantially reduced value based on what I'm about to describe. Mm -hmm. Dark store really amounts to, it's a new theory of property tax valuation appraisal. It's new. Uh, the what it involves is using a hypothetical value to determine what the current value is on a piece of real property, primarily commercial property is how it's primarily being used right now, not exclusively, but that's how it's being used. And the hypothetical value is used to determine what the current value is of a property on January 1. As everyone knows, counties through mass appraisal value every commercial property and all property as of January 1 of the current year. Well, mm -hmm. Dark Store uses a hypothetical value often far into the future of a different property and usually, very often a property that is, if not vacant, uh, say 40 years into its useful life. And then that is used as a comparable to establish the value of a brand new property or relatively new property in a good location at the very beginning of its useful life. Mm -hmm. And that's where the disconnect happens I see. in terms of establishing fair market value. Now, fair market value in Kansas is determined by statute. We have a statute that actually says fair market value is the, uh, it is the, uh, let me get the term here correct. It's the, the amount in terms of money that a well-informed buyer is justified in paying and a well-informed seller is, is justified in accepting in an okay. open and competitive market. That's fair market value in Kansas. That makes That's sense. what the state statute says. Sure. And fair market value, you should read for tax purposes as synonymous with appraised value. And that appraised right. value, again, is supposed right. to be determined on January 1 of the current year, not in the future. And the value of a, of a non-comparable property far into the future does not logically lead to tell us what the value of a newer property is on January 1 in an open and competitive market. It has nothing to do with it. As I said, I, that's the primary disconnect. Wow. So what are your concerns then as these property values are being lowered? What, what are the concerns and what are the implications for the counties and across the state of Kansas that, that uh, you see happening? Well, you know, in terms of, of, of things that are going to happen in the future. Uh, uh, one thing is uh, you're going to end up potentially down range as values get lowered in this kind of way, where you've got, you're going to end up with, you're going to end up with similar properties in the same class. Let's, let's talk about big box stores, just as an example. If you have, for example, a target in your County mm -hmm. that's valued according to fair market value, they've not appealed. They've decided they're not going to appeal. And you have another similar store, another big box retailer that, uh, has appealed and has gotten a 45% reduction in their value from the Board of Tax Appeals. Mm -hmm. Those two properties, though almost identical in their value for normal property tax appraisal purposes, have a wildly different value assigned to them. And if you get enough of those over a period of time, you're going to cre creating like almost a subclass of property within that class of properties. Okay. You're going to have unequal and non-uniform rates of assessment against those two properties I just described. Mm -hmm. If you get enough of those, yes, you have uh, you could end up with a non-uniform and unequal non-equal rate of assessment statewide. And if that happens or gets close enough to happening, what you'll end up with is something that could conceivably lead to statewide reappraisal, much wow. like happened in last happened in 1989. Uh, and and, and I've heard horrible. stories. Yeah, I've heard stories. That was not fun. That was well, very not. difficult. And, and the reason being is it's a real, uh, it really devours county resources to comply with statewide reappraisal. We believe that in wow. our records indicate that Riley County probably spent, our estimate is, about a million dollars to comply with statewide reappraisal back in 1989. 
wow. in subsequent years. So because you have to have hearing panels, you have all kinds of things going on mm -hmm. that the county has to fund the bill on. And uh, it's not cheap. Wow. So speaking of not cheap, do you have numbers? I mean, how big of, a, of an issue is dark store theory, uh, not only in Riley County, but maybe even across the state that you're aware of what's going on? What and I'll have? kind of focus on Riley County. Sure. Uh, we've sure. got, I mean, this is spreading across the state. I will say mm -hmm. that we've had, there have been losses in dark store cases. And again, I'm going to call them dark store cases. Uh, before the Board of Tax Appeals in different counties, Sedgwick County, we've had one, we've lost one recently. Uh, that's the Home Depot case in Manhattan. Okay. Uh, right, uh, Sedgwick County has lost a uh, dark store case, as has uh, Johnson County and Wyandotte County. So it's not just a Riley County issue. Uh, this is across, this is coming on across the state. Right now it's, it's focused primarily on big box retailers. But I'm gonna move away from our Home Depot case just for a second for this mm -hmm. reason. Leaving that one aside for a moment, just to show impact, we have 16 different cases now pending before BOTA that are dark store cases. Oh, wow. They're docketed. None of them have been heard yet, but they are a significant potential problem for Riley County. We've got 10 of them from tax year 2020. The total revenue at stake in those, even if they get only a 40% reduction in their appraised value by using dark store, that's going to be a loss of revenue to Riley County of $568,000. We've got six more uh, cases docketed and pending before the Board of Tax Appeals using the dark store theory. And those six have a potential revenue loss to Riley County, again, with a conservative estimate of a 40% reduction in value of a loss of $346,000. And it's a little bit more than each of those two figures. You add those two together and those total 16 cases that are pending, if we lose every one of those, uh, which could happen, uh, given the current uh, kind of tenor of the decisions we're getting out of the Board of Tax Appeals, you're talking over $900,000, and that's just 16 cases. Wow. Uh, this is not every business in Riley County. Mm -hmm. It's not every business that could conceivably make this argument. And then what gets lost in the discussion sometimes, there's a cascade of problems here that doesn't affect just the county. Uh, okay, the county's going to lose $900,000. It's not the county losing $900,000. We keep about 25%, excuse me, about 25% of that. Okay. The remainder, 48%, goes to the school district. They have a big stake in these cases. Wow. And the rest, the other 50%, is basically split between the city and the uh, county and the smaller entities. Everything okay. from cemetery districts, you name it, anything that levies sure. uh, will end up will end up losing uh, because they're going to, and they contribute to any refunds that are made. That okay. if there is, to the extent there are, are, some of those are paid under protest, and they will be because that's where you get a valuation dispute in front of the Board of Tax Appeals. If there's a refund ordered by the Board of Tax Appeals, the county would go ahead and reduce distributions to those other taxing units in order to make up their share of that year's refund. And that sometimes gets forgotten by a lot of the taxing entities. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have a big impact on everybody's budgets if that happens. And on top of it for counties, kind of an icing on the cake in a bad way, uh, to the extent the, those payments have been made and there's been some delay in making the refund, the county's going to have to pay, say it's languished at the Board of Tax Appeals for a year or two, which is okay. not, not uncommon uh, because of their uh, backlog of cases. Uh, the county will end up paying interest on the refund out of the general fund. It has to pay it alone. Wow. Only the county pays it, and it's at 8%. Uh, which can add up pretty quickly on a giant refund. That adds up very quick. Okay. And that's an additional hit in addition to losing that, that other revenue that the county was uh, banking on basically for its budgeting. So for the average uh, homeowner and, and businessman that uh, happens upon this, uh, this recording and, and has been interested in this Clancy and they ask, so what, you know, so what the, the big box stores are getting these breaks. What does that mean for the average homeowner? Why do they actually have a vested interest in this or they should have a vested interest in this? Because you talk about some of the money that's going back, but I mean, do folks really truly understand what that truly means? Well, it's, it's sometimes it's, it's kind of, uh, it's difficult to explain sometimes because it's the first time people are hearing it. Right. Not in government or associated with government in some way. But what it amounts to is an eventual shift of the property tax liability. And if it's not going to be paid, 
uh, for services that are demanded by the residents of that county, police protection, fire protection, ambulance, mm -hmm. all those things that government provides uh, because it should provide them and because people expect it. If it's not, if the expense of that is not being shared by those who are getting this kind of reduction, whether it's big box retailers or others, right. those costs are going to shift over to residential and smaller businesses. And that's where it's going to come from because the money's got to come from somewhere to provide those services. The alternative is to simply not provide those services. And that's not really an option. Right, right, right. So what do we do? Where do we go from here? As we uh, continue to talk about this, what are some things that uh, we can do as an organization and, and as, as average citizens to help address this issue? Well, we believe Riley County's introduced Senate Bill 222. And Senate Bill 222 uh, is legislation designed to meet this challenge of the, of the dark store. And it goes back to that definition. It's the, it's the, the statutory definition I told you about fair market value and a willing buyer, willing seller in a competitive market. What we've done is introduce Senate Bill 222, which actually says just straight out that a hypothetical value cannot be used to establish fair market value. Oh. And it doesn't use the word dark store. It doesn't change mm -hmm. the statute in any other mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. There's a reference, and I will, I will back up just a little bit on that. It does make it clear that none of this applies to agricultural valuation because that's not done in the same way. It's not fair market value for okay. agricultural properties. We added that at the request of the membership a couple of years ago to make sure that uh, those with agricultural interests know that this is not something intended to do anything to the way that they are currently, their valuations are determined. Mm -hmm. This doesn't change that at all. But what it does uh, is if, even if someone is before the Board of Tax Appeals and they're arguing, we're not using dark store, well, that's fine, but are you using a hypothetical value? Because that's in every that's in every one of these cases, uh, right. there has to be a hypothetical value, whether they want to call it that or not, and that can be developed on cross examination by the county of the representatives for the taxpayer. They have to admit that they have no choice mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, lawfully continue with testimony. Uh, that has to be admitted. There's a hypothetical value in some way in that, and so once we make it the law, if this bill passes and becomes law, is signed by uh, passes in both chambers and the governor signs it, mm -hmm. what will happen is that will cut that off. They will no longer be able, even if the Board of Tax Appeals were inclined to believe that uh, this this theory is something that should be used, it wouldn't be lawful anymore. Wow. It would be okay. very clear that it couldn't be any if a court were tempted mm -hmm. on appeal to say, well, hypothetical value here makes sense. They mm -hmm. couldn't do it. I see. Uh, and so mm -hmm. we think this is one of the best ways to address it uh, in terms of well, on the legislative front, that's one way uh, we think is 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 a, a good way to meet this challenge. That's great. Are there any other thoughts or any other ideas that you want to share with folks before we uh, call it quits? Sure. I think one of the key things is to mm -hmm. get engaged with their legislative delegation. Yeah. And please encourage them to contact the Riley County delegation and link up with them. Encourage their boards of county commissioners to get in touch with the Riley County Commission, uh, which who's very which is very active on this issue. Mm -hmm. uh, the more entities and individuals we have involved in the legislature on this, the better for everybody. It sounds like this is almost like dominoes, Clancy, and somebody has pushed the first one over. And now we've got a bunch of them just in succession. And we're going to see more as we progress in through the, the next several uh, years, really, unless we get a hold of it. So well, that could happen. That's one of the concerns is it can spread to other types of businesses. We, we often cool. kind of say that it's, you know, yeah. kind of coming to a business near you. There's no reason why the same theory couldn't be used on a rural county's implement dealership. Oh yeah. Casey's general store. Sure. And a 45% reduction in one of those types of businesses in a small rural community uh, could really have a dramatic impact on their tax base. Excellent point for folks thinking, Oh, that's just happening in the big city boy in any town, any, any part of the country and even any corner of the state where there's a, some sort of commercial retailer and, and uh, building, they potentially could do this. That's amazing. So, all right, Clancy. Well, thank you so much again for joining us today and, and sharing with us all things. I'm going to continue to call it dark store. To me, that's what's in my mind. And <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to keep calling. <laughs> and so uh, we certainly do appreciate your, your expertise and we look forward to uh, working with you this legislative session and seeing how things progress. So with Thanks, that, Bruce. I'd like to, uh, to say thank you and and I'm Bruce Cladney, Executive Director for the Kansas Association of Counties, and thank you for joining us. Oh.